Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. By this point, you're familiar with what WordPress is, and perhaps you're convinced that it's worth giving a try. So how can you have your own copy of WordPress to click around in and experiment with? Well, you have three primary options. Option one is WordPress.com, which I will explain in detail in just a moment. Option two is to sign up for web hosting, which I will explain in detail in just a moment. And finally, option three is to simply install WordPress on your computer. So let's now explain these in detail. So option one is WordPress.com, which I won't explain in too great of detail because I don't want this video to become a commercial for or against WordPress.com. So for now, I will just say this. If you're interested in getting your hands on WordPress and you want to experiment with posts and pages and you want it today, this hour, this minute, you can't beat WordPress.com. Beyond that, all I can say is that it's up to each individual website owner or business to perform their own research and decide which route makes the most sense for them. So let's move on to option number two, which is signing up for web hosting. Now there is a virtually limitless number of web hosts out there, all competing for your business, and I'm not going to endorse any of them. There are exceptions to the rule, but in general, you get what you pay for when it comes to web hosting. So I'll let you decide what an appropriate budget is for your web hosting. One of the main things you want to look for is that the web host advertises that they support WordPress or that they support PHP and MySQL. Now in the modern era, the vast, vast majority of web hosts will offer that support no problem. And they'll usually make it very easy, perhaps even one click away, to get WordPress installed and set up on your web hosting. Now I will say this, a lot of web hosts really advertise the fact that they offer easy one-click WordPress installers. And while that's a great feature, you only need to install WordPress once per website and installing it manually isn't rocket science. Now even some of the best web hosts in the world offer auto installers, so I'm not saying a WordPress auto installer is bad, I'm just saying it's not an important factor when choosing a web host. The important factors are the speed of the servers, the reliability of the servers, and actually I would say most importantly, the number of customers they cram onto a single server. So make sure you watch out for those factors when you're reading customer reviews of different web hosts, and you shouldn't have any trouble finding an excellent web host for your WordPress website. So moving on, let's review option three, installing WordPress on your computer. Now option three is what I recommend if you're really interested in learning about WordPress and learning how to get the most out of it. If your goal is to simply have a website up and running as soon as possible, you should really choose option one or two because this option three of installing it on your computer does not result in the general public being able to see what you create. Option three is only for your own development and education. So you can build your website on your computer using WordPress, and then later on, you can then transfer it to a web host. And only then, once that transfer is complete, can the entire world and general public view your website. Up until then, you can think of it as sort of just a text file laying around on your computer that only you can view. Now it's up to each individual to decide how they would like to get their hands on WordPress. But because this is an educational video series and not just a how can I get a website up ASAP series, uh, I'm obviously going to choose option number three. And in the remainder of this video, I'm actually going to show you how simple it is to install WordPress on your computer. So let's get started. The first step is to make sure that our computer has all of the necessary software to run WordPress. Now it's pretty simple. The only things we need are PHP, MySQL, and then some sort of server. In this case, we're going to use Apache. Now, if you're not familiar with any of those three items, it's okay, because we don't need to really know that much about them at the moment, and we don't even need to install them individually. In fact, there are plenty of packages that take all three, mush them together, and <laughs> make it very easy for anyone, including your grandmother, to install them on their computer. Now, if your computer is running on Windows, go ahead and perform a web search for WAMP or XAMP. Either of the two will do just fine. Or if you're running on a Mac, go ahead and perform a web search for MAMP. 
So at this point, you can now pause this video, go perform your web search, download the software, install the software. There should be some sort of on-screen instructions that walk you through the process. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. And then once the software is installed, go ahead and come back and unpause this video. Okay, at this point, I will assume that you're resuming this video because you've successfully installed either WAMP, XAMP, MAMP, or some other PHP, Apache, MySQL package, and you're now ready to carry on. So the next step is to create a database. So you'll need to make sure that whatever program you just downloaded has been launched and make sure that it's open and running. And then what we're looking for is something called PHP My Admin. Now, depending on which software package you chose, finding PHP My Admin might be a little bit different. Uh, but no matter which package you chose, there should be some sort of either new icon representing the software or when you first launch the software, it should open up some sort of screen. And we're looking for a start page, so perhaps it opened in your web browser. But in general, just look around for some sort of options or start screen and look for the phrase PHP My Admin. So once you've pulled up PHP My Admin, it will look something like this. And our task is very simple. We simply want to click on this database tab. And then where it says create new database, you can enter any name you want. Uh, I will call this database learning WordPress and then simply hit create. And that's it. <laughs> so that step's complete. The next step is to visit wordpress.org and follow the download buttons to download the latest zip file of WordPress. So once you've finished downloading WordPress, go ahead and extract the files. You can either double click it or depending on your operating system, perhaps right click and click extract now. And then you should end up with a folder called WordPress. Our next task is to move this WordPress folder out of our downloads folder and into a new special folder that was created just a moment ago by MAMP, XAMP, WAMP, or whichever package you chose. Now the name of this new special folder and the location of this new special folder will differ depending on your operating system and the package you chose. But in general, this folder is referred to as the local host directory. And it will be usually named something like htdocs or public HTML or www. Now I would start by looking somewhere either in your C folder if you're using Windows or somewhere in your applications folder if you're using a Mac. But if you still can't find this new folder, go ahead and perform a web search for local host directory and then just include the name of the package you downloaded. Now once you've located the special local host directory folder on your computer, go ahead and move over, cut and paste or drag however you'd like, but move over the WordPress folder that we extracted into this new special folder. Our next step is to open a new tab in your web browser of choice because we're going to navigate to that new special folder that we just moved WordPress to. So on my machine, that looks something like localhost colon 888. On your machine, it might simply be just localhost. Now if you're having trouble figuring out what the URL might be on your machine and neither of these work, go ahead and perform a web search for localhost URL and then just include the name of the package that you installed a few minutes ago. So let's pull this up. Okay, so this screen is simply outputting a list of all the folders in the localhost directory. So right now the only folder is WordPress, but if we had another folder named test1 or test2, you can see that uh, this directory will always show the latest contents. Now obviously we are interested in WordPress, so go ahead and click that. And the next step is to create a WordPress config file. Now, if we were actually installing WordPress on a web host, I would recommend performing this step manually. But because we're only installing WordPress on your local machine, this method should work just fine. So go ahead and click create a configuration file. And then there should be a button towards the bottom that says let's go or next step. This screen is where we give WordPress access to that database we created just a few moments ago. Now, if you remember, I chose to name the database in my instance, learning WordPress. The database username is root. Now for this password field, uh, you can either leave this blank or type in root. Uh, and it really depends on the package that you installed, whether you chose MAMP, XAMP or WAMP. 
Uh, in my case, the password is root, but yours might be blank. Uh, this is definitely localhost. And then you can choose to put something here if you'd like. It doesn't really matter for your instance, um, but you could name this test site, uh, or you can just leave it WP underscore, and then simply click Submit. If you see this screen, excellent. That means WordPress can communicate with the database that we set up. Now go ahead and click Run the Install. And from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. You simply provide a name for the website, so that can be anything you would like in this field, and then provide a username, a password, and an email address, and then click Install WordPress. Next, you will see a screen saying Success. Now a quick note, I chose admin as my username, and if this was on an actual web host instead of just our local machine, I would recommend not choosing admin just for security reasons because it's so predictable. But because this is on your local machine, security is not of the highest concerns. This isn't an actual public facing website, so that's fine. And go ahead and click login. And once you enter that username and password, you're done. We're complete. Congratulations. You have your own personal local copy of WordPress that you can experiment with. Now in future lessons, this means that you have your own WordPress environment to follow along with as we roll up our sleeves and continue to learn more and more about WordPress. So thank you very much for watching this lesson and stay tuned for more WordPress tutorials. Thanks. Bye.